Let's work on this problem. A 41 liter rigid cylinder contains 5 moles of a diatomic gas. The pressure increases from 3 atm to 9 atm. How much work is done on the gas? Now the first thing that we need to know is what type of process are we dealing with? Do we have an isobaric process, isochoric process, is it isothermal, or an adiabatic process? In an adiabatic process, no heat flows into or out of the system. So you're dealing with an isolated system. We don't have that. And for an isothermal process, the temperature is constant. We don't have that either. However, notice the keyword rigid cylinder. That means the volume of the cylinder is constant. It does not change. So therefore, we're dealing with an isochoric process, a process at constant volume. Now, for an isochoric process, the work done by the gas is always going to be zero. Perhaps you've seen this equation before. W is equal to P delta V. Well, in this case, the change in volume is zero because the volume is fixed. And so this gas will perform no work. So W is always zero for an isochoric process, something that you want to keep in mind. Now, let's move on to part B. Calculate the initial and final temperature of the gas. Now we can use this equation to do so. PV is equal to nRT. The initial pressure is 3 atm. The volume is going to stay 41 liters. N in this example is 5 moles and R is 0 0.08206 liters times atm per mole per kelvin. And our goal is to calculate T. So it's 3 times 41 divided by 5 and then divide that result by 0 0.08206. And so the initial temperature, if you round it to a nice whole number, it's going to be 300 Kelvin. That's at a pressure of 3 atm. Now what happens when the pressure triples to 9 atm? If you increase the temperature, the pressure will increase if the volume is held constant, which it is in this example. So the pressure increases from 3 atm to 9 atm. So it increases by a factor of 3. So therefore, we should expect that the Kelvin temperature must also increase by a factor of 3. So it's going to change from 300 Kelvin to 900 Kelvin. So T final is going to be 900 uh, Kelvin. Now to confirm this answer, we could use this equation. P1 divided by T1 is equal to P2 divided by T2. So the first pressure is 3 atm and it corresponds to a temperature of 300 Kelvin. We're looking for T2 at a pressure of 9 atm. So we can cross multiply. 300 times 9 is 2700 because 3 times 9 is 27. And then that's going to equal 3 times T2. So if we divide both sides by 3, 27 divided by 3 is 9. So 2700 over 3 is 900. And so that gives us the same answer that we have here. So that's how we can calculate the two temperatures. Now part C, determine the change in the internal energy of the gas. Anytime you want to calculate the change in the internal energy for any process, it's equal to NCV delta T. Now for a diatomic gas, you need to know that CV, the molar heat capacity at constant volume, is 5 over 2 times R for a diatomic gas. It's 3 over 2 times R for a monatomic gas, and approximately 7 over 2 R if the gas molecules have like 3 atoms or so. But at that point, deviations occur. So this expression will be a good approximation for CV. So CV is going to be 5 over 2 times 8.3145. And so that's going to be 
0.79. So now we can calculate delta U. So N is 5 moles, CV is 20.79, and the units are joules per mole per Kelvin. Now the change in temperature, the final minus the initial, that's 900 minus 300, which is 600 Kelvin. So the unit moles will cancel, and the units uh, Kelvin will cancel. So it's going to be 5 times 20.79 times 600 Kelvin. So the change in the internal energy of the system is 62,370 joules. So that's the answer for part C. Now let's move on to the next part, part D. How much heat energy was transferred? So what formula do we need to calculate Q? Now we can use this equation, formula that's associated with the first law of thermodynamics. The change in the internal energy of the system is equal to the heat transferred minus the work. Now, because W is equal to zero, delta U has to equal Q. So this equation is always true for an isochoric process. The change in the internal energy of the system is equal to the heat energy that flows into or out of the system. Now, we already have the value for delta U, so Q is going to equal the same thing. So if the internal energy increases by 62,000 joules, then the amount of heat energy that flows into the system is 62,000 joules, or 62,300 joules. And so that's the answer for part D. Now part E, did heat flow into or out of the gas? Because Q is positive, and because the temperature increased, heat energy had to flow into the system. If the temperature were to decrease, that means heat energy would be flowing out of the system. And so that's how we know of E, the answer for it. It's based on the temperature. So since the temperature went up, heat energy flowed into the system. So imagine if you have a container with a fixed volume and there's some gas particles in this container. Now once you add heat the temperature will increase. And if the volume is constant, that's going to cause the pressure to increase. And that's why it goes up from 3 to 9 atm, because we're heating up the gas molecules and they cannot expand. So the temperature and the pressure will go up. Now let's draw a PV diagram for an isochord process. So on the y-axis, we have the pressure values on the x-axis volume. So let's call this point A and point B. So for an isochoric process the volume is constant so that means we're not moving to the right and we're not moving to the left. We can only move up or down. Now the pressure is increasing so we have to be going up in this direction. Let me draw that better. So we're going in that direction. So at A, the pressure is 3 atm, and at B, the pressure is 9 atm. Now, as you go up in the PV diagram, the temperature is increasing. So at A, the temperature is at a low value. It's at 300 Kelvin. But at B, the temperature is at a higher value. It's at 900 Kelvin. And so keep this in mind. For an isochoric process, the work performed by the gas is always going to equal zero. And to calculate the change in the internal energy of the gas, it's NCV delta C. And if you need to calculate the heat energy absorbed or released, it's simply equal to Q. Q equals delta U. So once you find delta U, that's going to be the same value as Q. Now the last thing you need to know is CV, the molar heat capacity at constant volume. It's equal to 3 over 2 R for a monoatomic gas like helium, neon, or argon. 
These are particles consisting of one atom. For a diatomic gas like nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen gas, fluorine, these contain two atoms per molecule, and so the molar heat capacity is going to be 5 over 2R. And then it's approximately 7 over 2R for more complicated molecules like CO2 and things like that, like H2S as well. So those are some formulas that you want to keep in mind when dealing with an isochore process where the change in volume is zero. And so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.